this over to Rakhna. I have already sent the recorded uh, video, please. Chair persons for the nice introduction. The title of my talk is Lipoprotein Little A, not little anymore. What is important is to discuss about the lipoprotein yeah, little A on a case which I had encountered in my clinical practice. A 30 year old gentleman, Mr. M. Dr. Mr. Sengen, please mute yourself. Came with the problem of STEMI and he had undergone PTCA. Currently, he is in the post PTCA status. He gave a history that his father died due to sudden heart attack at his 50th year. And of course, the patient did not know about the lipid parameters of his father. The patient's LDL cholesterol level is 176. I started him on a high dose statin, rose was statin 40 milligram. Four weeks later, it touched 152 milligrams. And I added acetamide, 10 milligram, a non-statin drug. Six weeks later, the LDL cholesterol touched 128 milligrams. In fact, the fellow reported only after eight weeks, telling me that he developed an ischemic stroke with the right ceridemic paralysis. He had developed another cardiovascular event in the form of a stroke following acute coronary syndrome after a period of few weeks. His LDL cholesterol level at present is 98 milligrams. That prompted me to think in terms of an additional burden what this patient probably is having. So I asked him to go for a lipoprotein little a, which was reported as 180 milligrams. Now, what is the peculiarity of the lipoprotein little a? Lipoprotein little a has got a unique structure. It's an APOA, which is closely bound to the APOP moiety of the LDL-like particle on the other side. This lipoprotein A is actually in the form of Kringles, which is similar as a structure of plasminogen, which actually is responsible for inhibition of fibronolysis. The inhibition of fibronolysis at the site of block rupture can lead to myocardial infarction, ischemic stroke. At the turbulent blood flow, it is likely to promote thrombosis. In addition, the apolipoprotein A also mediates this action in the form of inflammation, pro-atherogenic defect, and creates the atherosclerotic stenosis as well as aortic valve stenosis. The LDL-like particle with apoB moiety, which is closely bound to apoA, actually causes atherosclerotic disturbance in the form of endothelial dysfunction. The inflammation is mediated by oxidized phospholipids, for which the hypoprotein little a is a carrier, and that produces the atherosclerotic stenosis of the blood vessels, and of course, it induces the atherosclerotic changes in the aortic valve, ending in atherosclerotic valve stenosis. Let us look at the elevated lipoprotein little a and cardiovascular disease. There are two landmark studies, population-based study. One is the Copenhagen CAT heart study, which involved nearly 11,000 participants with a 26-year follow-up. And another study, Copenhagen general population study, which involved 100,000 persons for a 14 years follow-up, which clearly indicated that the lipoprotein little a between 90th percentile and 95th percentile, that is from 85 to 119 milligrams of lipoprotein for 90th percentile and over and above 120 milligrams for 95th percentile had higher cumulative incidence for myocardial infarction when compared to the levels of 50. It is seen that age adjusted, sex adjusted, even then there is a definite increase in the myocardial infarction and even the multivariable adjusted the myocardial infarction prevalence is again higher for 90th and 95th percentile of lipoprotein little a levels. Having seen that, let me now try to tell you that lipoprotein little a is actually involved in recurrent major adverse cardiovascular events in the CGPS study. In fact, in 2,527 people were recruited for this study to observe the maze, particularly the recurrent maze. Lipoprotein little a levels more than 100 milligrams definitely has a higher tendency to get into problems of recurrent maze and it is 2.07 hazard ratio when compared to 50 to 19 and that it is only 1.38. Now, not only the morbidity but also the mortality is on the higher side with respect to increase in the levels of lipoprotein little a. The cardiovascular mortality from 90th percentile to 95th percentile 
actually is very high in those group of people who were having poor lipoprotein literally it is also seen that all cause mortality is again high between 90th percentile and 95th percentile apart from that we need to concentrate at another complication which is probably related to the lipoprotein literally there is a good article got published in new england journal of medicine which started talking about the meta analysis of data of nearly 7000 individuals with aortic valve ct scans which implicated the lipoprotein literally gene aortic valve calcification and appears to be mediated by the lipoprotein literally levels so there is a definite evidence of genetic preponderance to develop an aortic stenosis in the next year 2014 the jack published an important data with respect to the elevated lipoprotein levels and the risk of aortic valve stenosis in the general population people who had increased levels of lipoprotein literally over 90th percentile who had two fold increase of atherosclerotic aortic stenosis and 95th percentile it is about three fold increase in aortic stenosis now after that we have also witnessed another publication which had appeared in 2020 is <coughs> acc over 20 studies have established the lipoprotein literally as a genetically determined and likely causal risk factor for calcific aortic stenosis and is a predictor for faster calcific aortic stenosis progression this is the way in which the aortic stenosis probably is a end result of an increased levels of lipoprotein literally which is mediated by the oxidized phospholipids which has got a pro inflammatory pro atherogenic and pro inflammatory pro atherogenic pro thrombotic milieu which probably pushes this patient for an early onset of aortic stenosis with increased calcification faster progression in calcific score faster hemodynamic progression and a higher risk of aortic valve replacement and of course the increase in the death also occurs in those patients who develop classical aortic stenosis having seen this these are the three important studies one is astronema study two solcher three ring of fire studies which had come out to the data that elevated lipoprotein literally was associated with a higher risk for tavir as well as a cardiac death individuals in whom there is a higher structures of oxidized phospholipids apop and lipoprotein literally associated with apoc3 they have shown a faster hemodynamic progression and hard clinical endpoints these were the things which are observed in those people who had the higher structures of oxidized phospholipids apop having seen this the link between the lpa and the risk of ischemic stroke there is a large contemporary general population study nearly about 50000 individuals who were recruited for this study it is clearly indicating that the plasma levels of lipoprotein levels which are very high are associated with increased risk of ischemic stroke both observationally and possibly from human genetics this is the link between lipoprotein literally and the risk of peripheral arterial disease the epic norfolk prospective population study who had concentrated on only about 19000 participants had come out with a message that 37% increase of peripheral arterial disease for each 2.7 fold increase in the lipoprotein literally concentration of course it is not at all modified by ldlc levels having seen that let me also try to tell you the lipoprotein literally is also probably responsible for an increased incidence of heart failure not only through myocardial infarction not only through aortic stenosis but the both problems can also be complicated by heart failure what is important here the genetically determined increased levels of lipoprotein literally were associated with increased risk of heart failure this was actually identified in the danish participants why should we get worried about lipoprotein literally any level that is above the 90th percentile which had shown that there is an increase in the 2 to 3 fold risk of myocardial infarction 2 to 3 fold risk of aortic stenosis peripheral arterial disease ischemic stroke is on the higher side heart failure can also be a big complication of course the patients probably may die due to increased levels of lipoprotein literally due to various problems so then now we need to emphasize an important message that lipoprotein literally is a very strong risk factor for cardiovascular disease is an independent risk factor for cardiovascular disease and probably likely a causal risk factor 
for cardiovascular disease. In fact, the observational studies which have shown a link between lipoprotein delay for a routine number of complications which we have seen have been probably correlating with the data published by Mendelian randomization studies. How to assess the lipoprotein delay? We need to use well validated assays. We need to probably concentrate on isoform insensitive assays and fresh samples are preferred. One need not go for a LPA genotyping that is not required for risk assessment. What are the strategies to lower lipoprotein delay? Statins, in fact, is likely to increase the levels of lipoprotein delay. The past information is that it can go up to 7% increase. The recent studies have not shown that much of increase due to statin therapy. Niacin, no doubt, it reduces the lipoprotein level by 25%. Of course, we don't have any cardiovascular outcome data. DETP inhibitors like dalcitrap, anacetrap, evacetrap did not show any sort of cardiovascular benefit in spite of the fact that they had reduced the lipoprotein delay ranging from 0 to 50 percent. What is important here is to appreciate the efficacy of PCSK9 inhibitor, which has shown that it reduces by 25 percent. Aphrasis can reduce the lipoprotein delay by 35 percent. Apoye antisense which again, very, very important message that it can reduce the lipoprotein delay by 90%. APOE is small interfering RNA. We have to wait for the results to get published. It is likely that it can reduce the lipoprotein delay to the maximum extent. Having seen that, I think it is my duty now to concentrate on important modality of treatment for reducing the lipoprotein delay, that is PCS can inhibitor. Look at the four-year trial which had used the avalocumab, people in whom we had increased levels of lipoprotein delay beyond the median levels has shown a marked improvement in the form of risk reduction. Hazard ratio is 0.77 indicating 23% reduction. Absolute risk reduction is about 2.49 and the number needed to treat 40 when compared to the placebo. Let us look at the data published by OTC outcome study where the relative risk reduction actually has is not in any way connected with the baseline levels of lipoprotein delay. However, the absolute risk reduction probably depends on the baseline levels of lipoprotein delay. Let us look at this important message from this particular projection. The reduction of the cardiovascular events, which are occurring as a result of the introduction of the PCS canadian inhibitor alurucumab, clearly indicated that the corrected LDL cholesterol is responsible for about 75% reduction of absolute risk and 25% absolute risk reduction is probably initiated by the lipoprotein delay levels or lowering. How to arrive at this corrected LDLC levels? LDLC corrected levels is equal to LDL cholesterol minus what you should do is to 0.3 into lipoprotein delay mass. That calculation will you will be able to give you the information with respect to the LDL cholesterol corrected. So the conclusions as far as the ODC outcome trial is concerned, the baseline lipoprotein delay and corrected lipoprotein levels plus the LDL cholesterol levels and their reductions by alirikumab predicted the risk of major adverse cardiovascular events after recent years. Lipoprotein delay lowering by alirikumab is an independent contributor to maize reduction which suggests that LPA should be an independent treatment target after ACS. This is an excellent data which we had obtained. As far as the venous thromboembolism is concerned, there is a reduction in the venous thromboembolism in those people who were recruited not only for ORIA study, but also ODC outcome study. The overall information is that it reduces the even rates, particularly based on the baseline levels of lipoprotein little A. People who had a higher baseline levels of LPA has shown market reduction in venous thromboembolism. So what have we learned from Korean and ODC outcome trials? Alirukumab developed lower lipoprotein delay with a greater reductions at the higher baseline LPA levels. That's number one. Baseline LPA predicts major adverse cardiovascular events in patients with ACVD. While reduction in LDL corrected drives most of the event reduction, the contribution by LPA lowering to the event reduction with alirukumab increases with the higher baseline LPA values. 
we need to remember pcs canine therapy probably is associated with reduction in venous thromboembolism at high baseline levels anti sense drugs targeting rna this is actually the patients received the epitocyte directed anti sense oligonucleotide akca apoa lrx which was used in different doses 20 mg every week given has shown nearly about 80% reduction in the lpa which is actually a randomized double blind placebo control trial which has given a lot of information about the newer molecule that is the the epitocyte directed anti sense oligonucleotide the phase 2 trial had given information that it not only reduced the primary endpoint but also the secondary endpoints significantly reduced the lpa oxidized phospholipids of op b oxidized phospholipids of oa ldl c and op b levels nearly 90 98% of the patients achieved the levels less than 50 mg there were no safety concerns we need to wait for the publication of this particular study phase 3 Pelakarsan lipoprotein literally horizon study, which is actually an injection that is given 80 milligrams of protein daily every month, and is going to be a long-term follow-up of 4.25 years. And this is actually done in those patients who have established cardiovascular disease. Apart from that, the levels of 70 milligrams and levels of 90 milligrams are taken into consideration for the outcome. Also, I think the results are expected by 2024. Lipoprotein literally in Indians. I think Enos Enos did a lot of work. He has come out with the data nearly 30 mg more in Indians who have settled down in the United States. A number of case control studies from India had given a long information, useful information. LPA levels are connected with CAD, MI, stroke, desperately above the end, less than 45 years. The inter-heart study has clearly come out with an important information that population attributable risk for high lipoprotein literally for myocard infarction was 9.5% in south asian when compared to only 5% in european that we emphasizing the lipoprotein literally and its role in indians lipid association of india the recommendation 2020 use an isoform insensitive assay for lipoprotein a measurement non fasting fresh sample preferred treat other risk factors optimally levels more than 20 is increased asc would risk between 20 and 49 moderate risk factor more than 50 is a high risk feature initial screening at 18 years or earlier also if there is a family history of familial hypercholesteremia premature cad those patients in whom you have premature acvd familial hypercholesteremia the family history of premature cvd or recurrent avc despite optimal lipid lowering treatment over response to maximum lipid lowering therapy ischemic stroke of uncertain etiology calcific aortic stenosis actually one has to screen those patients with these problems Lipid Association of India part three recommendation published last year had come out with an important message. Lipoprotein literally more than 15 milligrams is considered as a other high risk features under this category. If you look at high risk, you can see that more than one high risk feature is considered as a high risk. Apart from the family history of coronary artery disease, his father died. My patient's father died to a premature coronary artery disease. That means one important factor is there. So he comes under high risk. just because he has one family history two he has already suffered from acvd three has also got high levels of lipoprotein lipase that means he comes under the extreme risk category a whereas cad one feature of high risk group comes under the extreme risk category a in whom we always recommend that the levels of lipoprotein the levels of ldl cholesterol should be less than 50 and optional will be less than 30 mg i think that has to be probably be the message that has to be carried over by all of us that uh, lipid association of india has come out with this sort of recommendation let me now go to the, my patient's problems he has reached ldl cholesterol levels of 98 mg it does not touch the goal the lipoprotein literally is 180 mg having seen this i think the valerikumar which was used in the odc outcome trial had given lot of information apart from the Evolucumab, which was used in four-year trial, for my patient, Mr. Yam, I may probably target the lipoprotein literally. It could be a therapeutic target as he suffers from only ACVD and very high LPA levels, particularly after the recent ACS with a strong family history of premature death that his father died. So, what is my choice? I probably have to choose only the PCS canine inhibitor therapy for my patient. 
for which he cannot afford because it is not cost effective. Lipoprotein aphrasis or LDL aphrasis probably can be attempted. Of course, it's not available in the city where I practice. So, ladies and gentlemen, let me conclude my talk. Elevated lipoprotein little a is an independent factor for AACVD, calcific aortic valve stenosis, stroke, and PAD. Elevated levels probably increases the risk of heart failure. Is it a missing link in premature and malignant ASCVD in Indians? That's a big question, which needs to be answered, needs to be uh, getting answered from all of us. Lipoprotein little a should form part of the lipid panel. PCS can and inhibitors seem to confer the benefit. Lipid aphrasis is effective and expensive. Antisense oligonucleotides are promising and CV vote results are eagerly awaited. So let me conclude my talk by telling you that lipoprotein little a is not little anymore. I consider that it is a deadly cholesterol. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen, for patient listening.